Good morning. Today we will discuss about if else if with the character and then we will move towards the switch case. So we already explored the concept of that is if else if ladder in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture we talked about how uh, we can check for the leap year and how we can check for the days uh, how we can uh, calculate the number of days for each month based on the year. Suppose if it is a leap year, then how we can calculate this that we seen in the last lecture. Now today, I will I want to demonstrate you some different con concept of if condition that we can do the same thing on character data type also. For example, let me start with the integer main. I'm simply writing here return zero. Let me save this particular program. For example, demo nine, demo eleven dot c. What I want to do? I want to check that. Suppose if user entered any character, then I want to check that it is lowercase character, uppercase character, or what kind of character? That is, it is digit or special letter, right? So you need to understand the ASCII value. So what is the ASCII value? Let me write here. 32 is the ASCII for the space. Right. And another ASCII that is starting from 48. 48 is ASCII of 0. 49 is the ASCII of 1. Up to 57 is the ASCII of 9. So 0 to 9 digit, the ASCII value is from 48 to 57. Another ASCII that is of starts from 65 is for capital A, 66 for capital B, up to 90 capital Z. For lowercase character, 97 is the ASCII of small a and 98 for small b. There are 26 alphabets, so you can say up to 122, small z, ASCII value is 122. So how can I check that the ASCII value is this for any character? So very simple, you can declare here character C equal to capital A. Now you can print percentage C is equal to percentage D. Suppose if you are printing the C character at the both time, for example, let me write here not C, it is CH. So this is this is character CH and this is also a character CH. Suppose if you run this particular program, then you will get the ASCII value of character A if you are using the percentage D. So if you are writing percentage D, then you will get the 65. If you write percentage C, then you will get the character a. So for each character you can get like this. For example, suppose if I am writing that is a small a, then I will get 97. Suppose if I am writing small z, then I will get 122. Suppose if I am passing space, right, then I will get the space ASCII value is 32, right. So now why I am doing like this? I want to know the ASCII value for each character. Suppose if I am passing the capital A, then you all know that it prints the value 65. Now I want to check that if the given character is in capital letter, small letter, or in digit, or it is a space, or it is a special character. I want to check like this. So whenever you want to check like this, you can simply get the character from the user. So you can write to the user that enter any character to check. It is a lowercase, uppercase, digit, special character or what kind of character. So you can write percentage C and M person CH. Now you can use the if condition to do all this calculation. If ch greater than or equal to now, if it is a character, but you can uh, use the ASCII value to check for the condition that if it is greater than or equal to 48 
and CH is less than or equal to 57, it means my value is between 48 and 57, then I just want to print that the it is a digit, right? Even you can simply print this percentage C is a digit and you can print your CH. But I want to check that if it is not between 48 and 57, then so if it is not between 58 and 40, 48 and 57, then you can check is it the between 65 and 90? If it is between 65 and 90, then you can print here that percentage C is a upper character. So you can simply print like this. But if it is not this, if it is not this, then you can write one more condition over here. Is it between 97 and 122? If it is 97 and 122, then you can say it is a lower character. If it is not 97, then you can check again for the condition that is character equal equal 32? If yes, then you can say this is a space. So you can simply print the message, it is a space. But if it is not 32, if it is not between 48 and 57, it's not between 65 and 90, so you can write simple else that it is a special character. Now you can simply compile and run. Now you can check what I'm doing. I'm taking input from the user. Suppose if I'm entering the character that is a capital P, then it will give me that P is an upper character. Yes, it is in upper case. Suppose if I'm executing the same program again and I'm passing P in a small, then it says that P is a lower character. But suppose if I'm passing the seven digit, then it says that seven is a digit. Suppose if I'm passing semicolon, then it, it says that it is a special character. And suppose if I'm passing a space over here, then it says that it is a space. So what I did in this particular program, very simple. I taken the input from the user. I checked, is it between 48 and 57? If yes, then it is a digit. Then if it is not between 48 and 57, then and then it will goes into this particular else. So I already explained you in the previous lecture that if else if is like a priority, it will first check this. If it is fine, then it will not check the rest condition. But if condition is not true, then it will check the another. If this is true, then it will execute this. Then it will not check the next conditions. If it is not true, then it will check into all this condition. So if all this condition are false, then and then it will goes into else and it will print the message that it is a special character. But sometimes people say that, sir, I want to write the code. And the code is, suppose if user pass A, E, I, O or U, I want to give the message to them that it is a vowel. And if it is not between A, I, O, U, it means the letter, letter other than vowel, then I want the message consonant, right? So how we can do this? See, semicolon is not a consonant, right? Uh, for example, colon is not a consonant. So I need to check all these things. How we can write the code for the same? Let me do the same program again. So it will be demo12.c. I'm taking the input from the user. Now I want to check, is it A, E, I, O, U? So you can simply write the condition if CH equal equal A or CH equal equal E or CH equal equal I or CH equal equal O or CH equal equal U. It means if it is a A, E, I, O, U, 
then you can print the message that percentage C is a vowel, right? So it is a vowel. Else you can print the message that it is a consonant, but it will be wrong if user is not passing any character. So I'm printing the message that it is a consonant, right? You can simply test your program. It will definitely work fine if you pass the character and if it is a lowercase. For example, A, then it says it is a vowel. Yes, it is true. But if I pass capital small b, then it says that b is a consonant. It is true. But suppose if I pass capital A, then it says A is a consonant. It is wrong. Why? I need to check not only small a. I need to check that or ch equal equal capital A or ch equal equal capital E or ch equal equal capital I or ch equal equal capital A E I O U E should be capital I should be capital A E I O or ch equal equal capital u then it is vowel now somehow i did the program but still there is a one mistake that is logical error suppose if i'm passing capital a a is a vowel yes it is true suppose if i'm passing small a a is a vowel yes true if i'm passing capital b b is a consonant yes it is true b small b is a consonant yes true Suppose I'm passing semicolon, semicolon is a consonant, it is wrong. So I need to check before this, this should be done if and only if the if given character is, the given character is an alphabet. So how we can do this? Simple, if character greater than or equal to 97, and character less than or equal to 122 then do this then do this but what happened in this particular case it will check for only lower case right it will not check for the upper case so how we can do we can write here one more condition and that will be what if character greater than or equal to 97 and less than or equal to 122 or or character greater than or equal to 65 and character less than or equal to 90. It means that if it is a capital A to Z, then it will check this. If it is a small A to Z, then it will check this. If it is a small A to Z, then also fine. If it is a capital A to Z, then also fine. If it is other than this, if it is other than this, then you can print the message that it is not alphabet, right? So very simple program I did, but it is the perfect program. You can say that, suppose if you pass semicolon over here. Now try to trust the program. Suppose I pass semicolon, then it will check the ASCII value of semicolon. Is ASCII value of the semicolon is between 97 and 122? No. Is ASCII value of the semicolon is between 65 and 90? No. The, if if condition is not valid, then it will not go into another if. It will directly execute the else and it will give you a message. It is not alphabet. Yes, it is true. Now, suppose if I am passing the capital A, then it will check. Is it between 65 and 90? Yes. So, A is a vowel. Now, it will check another condition. Is it A, E, I, O, U? Yes. Then it is a vowel. But students, whenever you have the lots of or condition and all are for equality condition you can convert this program into switch case switch case is what switch statement can use the multiple equality statement and convert uh, you can pass this different case and then you can execute which situation we have to use the switch case let me write over here see switch statement what is switch statement and why it is required switch is like a you can say to check equality condition 
we can use a switch statement. What is the syntax for the same switch? Then you can pass your variable. So your variable value can be a character or it can be a integer. Here in switch, you can pass a different case. For example, here you can write case one if your variable has an integer value. And here you can write character case capital A if your variable is a character data type. So, and for each case, you can write break. So, if you are not writing break, then multiple case will be executed. One more thing that you need to understand over here that uh, you can write the default. And you can write default at any place, right? It doesn't mean that you can you have to write the default at the end only. Default is like a else part in the if if else, right? So if any case is not matched, then your default will be executed. So we will convert this particular program into switch case. But before this, I want to give a simple example of switch case. So let me save this program as demo 13 dot C. I want to open the demo 12 dot C. I want to save it as demo 14 dot C. I want to make the changes over here. Yes. Now students, I want to give you a demo of switch case. How switch is working? For example, switch is working for the choice. So I'm just taking here variable integer choice. Now here you can get the input from the user, enter your choice. So suppose you can get the choice from the user, that ampersand choice. Now you can pass the choice into your switch case and you can look for the each case. For example, if it is a case one, then you can simply print the message to the user that you entered one, right? And you can write the break for each case. If you don't write the break, then it will execute the remaining all the case until and unless it finds the break. So if you write here case two, then you can print the message to the user that you entered to. Right. And you can write break. And here in case 3, you can write the message print that you entered 3. I don't want to write break over here. So break is not compulsory. And you can write the default. Default means if any 3 above case is not matched, then your default will be executed. So you can say that in other other input is there, then I want to execute the default. See carefully, I had not written the break after the case 3. Now what I can see, it will asking me to enter the number. So suppose if I am entering the number 1, then it will execute the first case and then it will simply break from here. So it will give me output that is you entered 1. So it is like an exact equality condition like if choice equal equal 1, then you entered 1. Suppose if you run again, and suppose if you pass here 2, then it gives me that you entered 2. Suppose if I am running the program and I am passing the value 5. Now what happens? See, is 5 is matching with the case 1? No. Is 5 matching with the case 2? No. Is 5 matching with the case 3? No. If any case is not matched, then your default will be run. Other input. But remember, student, suppose if you are writing here a input 3, then it will match with the case 3, but no break is written over here, then it will execute all the statement after the case 3. So you will get the output, you entered 3, and you will get the other input also. Why? Because I am getting message from here. So the recommend practice is write the break if you want to break and don't write the break if it is not required. Now I want to convert the same program like this. That is uh, I did using the if else. I want to convert the same program using switch case. How we can do this? Simple student. Whenever you have the values like this, then you can convert this program into switch case. How we can do this? Let's see. Simple, you can write over here the switch and 
default you can write so here you can write switch choice so what happened here your choice variable will be passed if and only if it is between 97 and 122 or if it is between 65 and 90, 90. so if it is a small letter of it is or if it is a upper letter then i am passing into switch case now here you can write case here in case you can write if it is a capital A then it is a vowel or case so no need to write or now so case A E now you can write O now you can write S A E I O now I am writing I and I can write here S A E I O U but I need to repeat the same thing for the lower case also so small a small e small o see case and case value is the syntax right in earlier example i use the digit see here i use the digit now i am using the character so i have to enclose within single quotation mark <clears throat> now i am printing that percentage c is vowel so here you can make the changes also that is case i colon that case u colon and case u colon this is the syntax that you may, must make to take care about this now i am just simply breaking the loop breaking the switch case if it is a e i o u capital or small and here you can simply break now here you can write the default it is consonant what I did, see carefully, if my letter is between 97 and 122, then and then I am passing over here. Or if it is between 65 and 90, then and then I am passing over here. Now what happens students, see, I am doing what? I am checking for the it is vowel or consonant and here you can check. Suppose if you are passing capital E. Then what I will see, it will go into the switch case, before this it will go into if case and in if it will check for the ASCII of 97, it is between 65 and 90, so it will move over here. Your choice that is E will be passed over here, it will match with the case A, it is not match, then it will match with the case E. Now it will run the statement and it will find the break and before break it will run all the statement. So you will get the message, E is a Vowel, right? So I simplified the program. Suppose if I am passing that is a small e, then also it is a vowel. Suppose I am passing f, then f is a consonant. And suppose if I am passing the colon, then it is not a alphabet. But what happens? See, I have to write the multiple conditions over here, and that is for each character that is for a i o u and all these things i don't want to write the multiple case for a e i o u it means uh, i want to use either capital or i want to use the either small is there any other way to convert the capital letter into lower and to convert the lower into upper yes you can if you see carefully if you see carefully over here and let me give you some calculation. See, capital A ASCII value is 65, and small a ASCII value is equal to 97. Suppose if you find the difference between this two, if you find the difference between this two, then the difference between this two is 32. Right? It means that the difference between this two ASCII value is 32. Not only this, suppose if it is a B, then B equal to 66, and if it is a B small, then it will be 98. So again, the difference will be static, and the difference will be fixed. The difference will be again. So what I want to do over here, I don't want to write, I don't want to write a case for upper and lower both. So is it possible to convert if it is a lower case then we will convert it into upper and if it is a upper then it is fine yes you can do suppose if it is a 
Suppose if it is a capital, then it's fine. But if it is a lower, then I don't want to do this. Right. So how we can manage this? If it is a lower, then you can check over here. If it is between 65 and 90, it's okay. If it is between 97 and 122, so here you can write the condition again. If CH greater than or equal to 97 and CH less than or equal 122, then CH minus is equal to 32. So what happened in this case? If your value is small b, it means 98. So you are converting, you are my, my, minus, you are deducting the 32 from 98, you will get the 66, right? So CH minus equal to 32. And now I'm passing the CH, it will be capital B, right? So I'm converting my input into capital, and then I'm dealing with the same. So no need to write the multiple case for all these things. Now, suppose if I am passing capital A, then there is no problem at all. What happens? See, it is between 65 and 90. Yes, it is between 65 and 90. Then it will check. This condition is false. Here your character will be passed. It match A. A is vowel. It is will come. Now let me run again. Suppose if I am writing enter any character, for example, small b. Now is it between 97 and 122? Yes. The small b ASCII value is 98. Now is it between 97 and 122? Yes. Now 98 minus 32 because small b ASCII value is 98. So 98 minus 32 it will be 66. So your character 66 will be passed over here CH and then it will check and it will give you that b is a consonant. Right? Even suppose I am writing small a. Right. Then it will go into this capital A. Why? Because I am deducting the value 97 minus 32. It will be capital A and it will give you a message that A is vowel. If you see here carefully, then your small A is converted into capital. You will get here always capital letter. Why? Because if it is a capital, then I am not doing anything. If it is not capital, then I am converting the character into capital. And once I am con converting into capital, and then I am matching the A, E, I, O, U, then you will get the message that it is vowel or consonant. So this is the, you can say that if is covered, your nested if is covered, your switch case is covered, and again, if and else is also there. But I want to give you one more example of switch case so you people get the better idea that why switch case is required. So I want to give, I want to do a simple program on switch case to understand how the case and all these things are working. Remember, student. You can write default anywhere in switch statement one. Even no need to manage the sequence of the case. You can write capital B first and then you can write capital A. It is also a valid. Break is not required at E after the completion of each, each case. If you want to break, then and then you can use the break. Right? Now I want to write the simple program that I want to take the two variables. A and B. Now I want to, not A and B, it is number 1 and number 2. Now I want to get the number 1 and number 2 from the user. So I enter number 1 and number 2. I'm getting from the user. Percentage D, percentage D, and person number 1, and person number 2. Now what I want to do, I want to print the message to the user. Enter your choice and based on the choice, what you want to do? For example, one for addition. So what you want to do? Addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. That you also you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication. That will be your third option 
multiplication and fourth option that will be your division now i am asking to the user that enter your choice so i want to get the choice from the user and based on the choice i want to work here you can write slash n to make the new line so it will be printed on every new line after this you can simply copy over here also so once you get the two number now i'm asking to the user that what you want to do with this two numbers right so here i'm getting the choice from the user now here you can scan the choice from the user percentage b and you can write m percent choice now what happens students suppose if the choice is one then i want to do the addition if the choice is two then i want to do the subtraction so here you can write a switch and you can pass your choice variable suppose the case is one then you can write the printf or you can take one variable that is result so result i want to take the result variable as a float because might be a chance the number 1 divided by number 2 resulting into float value so here you can take the variable float result now i am doing what if it is a case 1 then result is equal to number 1 plus number 2 now break is required because if you don't do the break and if case 1 is passed then it will execute the rest case also so here you can write number 1 minus number 2 again break is required so if it is a case 1 then do this if it is a case 2 then do this if it is a case 3 then you can use the multiplication if it is a case 4 then you can use the division now if it is a default it means the if the choice is not match then you can print the message that it is a invalid choice so you can put the message to the user that it is a invalid choice please try again and after this at the last you can simply print the result is equal to percentage d and you can print your variable result now what i did students very simple i taken the two numbers from the user for example number is 45 and the number is 23 right so it is asking me for the choice what do you want to do with these two numbers i want a uh, addition of this two number then the result is equal to 0 why because i did the addition result variable is float and i need to print here percentage f not percentage d so now you can rerun your program again enter the number 45 and 23 choice is 1 you will get 68.00000 but what happen in this particular case i want to display only 0.2 digit after the value so here suppose if i am passing 45 and 23 i will get 68.00 if it is a addition now suppose if i am passing 45 and 23 and if i pass 2 then it will give me the subtraction that is 22.00 suppose if i am passing 15 and 5 and the multiplication will be 75 suppose if i am passing 15 and 5 and the division is 3 so very simple what i did in this particular program you can get the idea suppose if the choice is invalid like this and then it will give me a message invalid choice but remember if the choice is valid invalid then i don't want to display the result if the choice is invalid then i don't want to display the result then you can write the condition over here if if choice is greater than 0 or choice less than 5 and 
and do this here you can use and so what happened my choice will be suppose 2 is 2 is greater than 0 yes is 2 is less than 5 yes then and then do this so your result message will not be displayed now if the choice is out of range for example 15 and 5 3 for multiplication result will be displayed if my choice is out of range, for example, 10, then it will display only invalid choice. It will not display the result. So my result should be displayed if and only if the choice is greater than 0 and choice is less than 5. So it is all about a condition in which situation what you want to run. You can write the switch case like this and you can paste your program and you can uh, even take the input here you can pass the character also if it is a character then write a single quotation mark over here if any case is not match then your default will be run you can write default at any position right so that's it from my side from next lecture onwards we will look into the loops that is for while and do while loop